let him get rolling on this. Um, fire away. Thank you. Dan, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate you reaching out and also had a great day yesterday hanging out at the shop time flies and talking to people. Uh, talked to a few of y'all and talked to some other members that aren't here tonight, but it was a, a great day. Um, I think my presentation that I'm going to do is something that can be really helpful for you in terms of um, helping you find and locate fish and catch fish if you ever come to South Louisiana. As to my fly time, why anybody would ask me to do a fly time <laughs> demonstration is beyond me. I'm purely functional. Uh, I, uh, I don't tie very neat. I tie functional flies though that work. Um, and I have a good one for you and it's a really good fly because it's somebody else's pattern. Um, Kirk Dietrich, uh, he guided for a long time. He's, he hasn't guided in a long time. But he's one of the best fly tires in Louisiana. He lives in Chalmette, which is over by New Orleans. And uh, you'll see a lot of his patterns in Argus and Umpool catalogs like Kirk's Rattle Rouser, Kirk's Spoonfly. And a few years ago, he came up with this fly. He called it the cross rattle. When he ties it, he ties it with rubber legs coming out the chenille. And you can tie it in crawfish colors, and it makes a great crawfish. Um, I have now probably tied more of these than Kirk has, because as soon as I saw it and started using it, uh, I'm a fanatic about this fly, and I've done different variations on it, and Kirk and I talk about this frequently. Um, what's unique about this fly is this wing here, most of the times on the fly, the wing is just tied in, tied in here at the hook eye, and so the wing will kind of flex up as it moves in the water. This wing is connected, it stays parallel to that hook shank. The fly is also keel weighted. So because of those two things, it tends to really have a darting side-to-side -side action as you strip it, particularly if you tie it lighter. Um, it's keel weighted. You can vary how much weight you use. Like if I'm going to be fishing something that's really grassy, I'll tie it lighter. And honestly, if, you're going to, if you really need it to sink slow, you could tie the rubber legs in, and that would help slow the sink rate as well. Um, so I'm going to get into tying it. It's not overly difficult, but there's a couple of things about it that are kind of unique that I really haven't seen in other fly patterns. And so they're, they're kind of cool tricks, and, and they're cool tricks that Kirk came up with. Um, this is a Gemmercot 2 SL12S 1 odd. Um, normally I'm tying these on SC15s because I'm normally tying these for our more interior backwater marsh, which is not where we encounter the great big bulls, and SC15s are fine for that. I don't fifteens for when I'm fishing the outside edge for bulls because I've been too many of them on big fish. Um, so again, color patterns can be mixed on this. You can change the color of the wing or the chenille body any way you like, mix and match. Um, I'm going to start just with a, a brown thread. So first I'll keel weight it. I have a little flat lead here. Tie it on the top of the shank. Bring it back. I'll just fold that little extra tag over. for a weed guard. I take a piece of mono, bend it over and kind of crimp it to where I have a sharp V with it. Bring that to just behind the hook eye. And do some wraps diagonally this way, and then back diagonally that way. That might be good. I think that's where the feedback coming from. Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah, I think it's good. Um, and then I'll take this and uh, pull them down and kind of split them out a little bit. Do a few wraps uh, between the legs. <laughs> and I'm not going to cut them all the way to the short length, but I'm going to cut some of it off to show quite as much extra. 
I'm going to return my thread to the back. And I'm going to take a little orange rabbit. And I'm going to make kind of a mandible for the shrimp. Just with a little tuft of orange rabbit. Um, I'll use that orange rabbit pretty much whatever color I'm making the shrimp. And then, oops, I dropped my legs. <laughs> Take these rubber legs and tie them in. Makes kind of like antenna or just trailers for it. Just kind of helps give it a little extra action. And then a little bit on this, I, I have some finished raccoon here. You can use marabou or just whatever's laying around your desk. Just something to give a little bit of fluff uh, and, and kind of extend the front end of the fly. It's time to tie in uh, mono eyes. Now, the uh, I pulled some out. Probably dropped them too, but I got some. Um, on this fly, the eyes are not just for appearances. They actually are an integral part of the construction and how this thing is put together that you're going to see. What I do for my eyes, I, you know, I take a piece of mono, burn both ends, hit it with magic marker, and then dip it in either epoxy or UV cure. And to get my eyes consistent, what I do is I just kind of touch the inside of the hook shank with the, the eye and bend around the hook to make my, my bend point. Bend that, bend that to a little L. And then I do the same on the other side. And so they'll be consistently sized. And um, generally, the, the gap of the hook is kind of a good length to have them. So. So, made my eyes, cut them. When I'm kicked out a little bit, so do that one, turn it over. tight in and before I move forward I'm going to put a drop of super glue here just to kind of secure everything that's there. All right. Then we take some chenille. Uh, this is trilobal antron chenille. You can use ultra chenille as well, medium size. Um, basically like a four millimeter. And uh, So we're tying the end of my chenille in advance. The thread. So I take the chenille and I go between the eye and the, and the, the hook on this side under the materials, being careful because this stuff kind of likes to tangle up and snag in the chenille. So I grab this stuff and hold it out and bring the chenille under the eye there.
Let that tie it off, give it a half hitch just to keep things together. So then I take a brush. Um, there's a lot of different brushes you can use. I like uh, EP three inch brushes in either, this is a craft fur brush, which I've really been liking the craft fur brushes lately. Uh, you could also use the three inch EP Foxy brush. The craft fur brush I find is a little more supple. It might be a little easier to get to lay in the direction you want instead of getting all spiky all over the place. Um, just kind of depending on what you're doing. So I take the brush, I kind of get rid of some excess wire here. And I'm going to kind of fold the materials over to one side and give them a little crimp. Um, even dampen my fingers a little bit and do it. Just to kind of get them as much to one side as I can. And this is kind of where the trick of this fly comes in and, and kind of the neat part. So I take the tip of the brush, come in between the weed guards. And tie it in near the eye. Get rid of excess, pull the wire over it down. So this is the trick. You take this brush and you come back and you go between that eye and the hook and you come around and then go between this eye and the hook and that brush wedges between the bend of the hook and the eyes and that's what keeps that brush extended along the hook shank and staying to the hook shank so that it doesn't kick up as you fish it and that's why that fly gets that cool action. And for the zoom to kind of to help looking from this side. And take it and come kind of under the eye and around that way. And then around the eye like that. Then back between the weed guards. And then I get up here by the head and try to clear me a uh, a little bit of a spot, and I get some wraps on. When you do that with foxy brush, does that change how well it lays back? Um, this lays back into a nice wing, nice with the foxy brush. I generally have to do more trimming with foxy brush. Yeah. Also, the foxy brush tends to be thicker and so it, yeah. and, and they're, not in, they're not all entirely consistent in how heavy the brush is. If I have a heavier brush, sometimes I have to do some trimming just to make sure that my hook gap isn't overly crowded, you know. Um, it just kind of depends on the brush. Um, you know, and, and of course if you've bought EP brushes lately, the price jump from about a year and a half ago has just been crazy on them. You know, they went from being about nine or ten bucks for a pack of six brushes to 17 to 19 brush bucks for a pack of six brushes. It <laughs> uh, makes that uh, brush making machine you have all the more appealing. <laughs> okay, so just half hitch it and we'll just hand whip finishing it. Pull it back. Oh, and I just glued it. Hook eye, but I can always clear that with a lighter and a paper clip. <laughs> I need a paper clip on purpose. So I'll just take it and uh, you know, kind of see how the fibers are arranging. Go through it with a comb, and trim some of the wilder hairs. Um, this one, this material is soft enough, I'm not overly worried about that hook gap. I think it's going to be fine. So let me put it back in the rice just as it kind of. And then I'll cut the uh, weed guards about even with where the hook point is. And that's Kurt Dietrich's shrimp head. We, we call it the shrimp head uh, because it looks like a shrimp head. That's not really his name for it. But <laughs> um, 
That's it. It's a simple that fly. Great. It's a fairly simple fly. It's a great fly. Fish is fantastic. Um, I've tied them small and caught bonefish on them just to do it, and just so I could call Kirk up and say, "Hey, I caught a bonefish on your fly." Um, I've caught, you know, pretty much everything in the marsh on it. Um, if again, if I'm fishing the the more interior duck pond type marsh, that's the first thing I tie on. Um, and again, I'll do different colors. I'll do white on white, tan on white, tan on tan. Around Halloween, I'll do black and orange just to be festive and call it pumpkin spice, you know. Okay. And it actually works too. <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, you can alter the colors. One of my favorite, and I'm going to show a picture of it later, is with um, Olive Chenille and EP Root Beer Foxy Brush. He calls it root beer, it doesn't really look like root beer. Um, he has another color that he calls backcountry that's almost identical to the root beer in the foxy brush. And that over olive really, really, really looks good. Um, you know, at different times of year, we actually have different kinds of shrimp. Uh, white shrimp, which this looks a lot like the white shrimp. They're kind of, you know, white to grayish silver. And then we have brown shrimp that come through. And, um, that olive with the root beer or backcountry colored foxy brush, I think is good at imitating either the brown shrimp or crabs, because it's that, that color is very, very crabby too. Um, anyway, that's the fly. <laughs> um, one question, you talked a little bit about hot spots and shrimp. I don't know if you're gonna go into I'm gonna cover that more when we okay, yeah. Cool. yeah, that's a great note. Yeah. Um, sweet. Did anybody have any questions for Ron? Yeah. Yeah, one question, on, on your weed guard, do you use monofilament or foot pound test to use? Uh, that might be 20. So, so something I, that, you know, I used to always want to use really heavy monofilament weed guards. And then somebody, somebody pointed out to me is that it doesn't have to be that heavy because you're not trying to move the weed or the stick out of the way. You're just trying to make the fly move up off the weed or stick. And it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to move that fly. So this, this might be 15. It's, you know, just strong enough to stand up. 15, I, I think it's 20. And I think it's actually fluoro just because I had a piece of floor laying on the desk, so I taped it up with my eyes. <laughs> um, but it, it, yeah, it doesn't have to be really heavy. In fact, I prefer it not be too heavy, because then it becomes a fish guard instead of a weed guard to make it too heavy. Perfect. Well, we're going to get Ron set up for his full presentation now. If anybody has any questions they want to run by Ron, um, up close and personal before we get started on that. Jeff's going to get transitioned into getting the presentation rolling. Um, so take about 10 minutes, visit among yourselves, yeah. and we'll get started.